Greetings and salutations. Uh, my name is Retson Noor. That's an alias uh, because I'm part of the Ouroboros Inner Circle. And I'm going to have to explain what that is because most people probably have not heard that word before. The Ouroboros is an ancient symbol. It's the snake that's eating its tail. It's usually like a circle. So you have the snake and the snake is eating its tail. So this is an ancient symbol that's been used like for a thousand years or more. And it's been around the world. But I'm basically uh, thinking about uh, Scandinavia because the Ouroboros was classified as the Viking serpent. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I chose the name Retzen Noor because it sounds like a Viking. So I like to think of myself as a Viking American because uh, I have a Scandinavian heritage and I'm guessing probably a, a Viking lineage. But I mean, the Vikings were around years and years ago, so I, I don't have proof of that. But uh, I do have uh, uh, a Scandinavian uh, background with my uh, grandparents. They came from Finland. Uh, and Finland has only been around since 1918. That's when uh, Finland, Finland was established, 1918 to 2018. So Finland actually has not been around for years and years. It just was around for 100 years. So uh, instead of saying I'm Finnish American, I'm saying I'm Viking American. Uh, and people will be kind of discombobulated about that. But there's nothing I can do about that. Could also be known as the Inner Workings Society. So there is a lot of uh, people that are in different alternative type of societies. And I'm calling this the Inner Workings Society. So I'm going to give you some examples that we have. Uh, we have the U.S. government has uh, inner workings, uh, the European Union, uh, the Vatican, uh, the colleges. Now, uh, that was a good example of colleges because everybody heard about the scandal that they were uh, talking about, that people were trying to get uh, their kids into these elite colleges. They'd contact the college in a circle, so to speak, and try to get their kids into the college. Uh, I heard that, for example, like Stanford, uh, they'd, they'd say that somebody was uh, in the rowing team, but the student didn't actually do any rowing. <laughs> so this was kind of like a make-believe thing. So it was a big scandal that was in the news. Uh, there's corporate uh, a type of uh, inner circles. Uh, for example, today I was uh, listening to the uh, National Public Radio, where I get most of my information from, by the way, National Public Radio. And a National Public Radio mentioned about uh, thousands of uh, injuries at ski resorts. And they don't want to uh, give out that information because uh, the ski resorts uh, don't want to have problems with, uh, you know, like uh, people investigating, but they've actually had thousands of people that got injured at ski resorts. So this uh, inner circle at the ski resorts try to keep the information, you know, so that they don't tell the public about this. So this is uh, like an example of the inner circle. Uh, my favorite example of an inner circle thing and you're probably gonna get a little upset about this and I'm sorry that I'm gonna have to tell you this but there is uh, a certain inner circles that you need to contact in order to get things accomplished so everybody knows that uh, uh, if say if you need a kidney uh, you're like a, a desperate need of a kidney and you're, you're put on a waiting list. So that's the establishment way of uh, uh, doing it. You're on the uh, waiting list. But the people that are in the know, 
they'll contact the inner circle. So what they need to do is uh, the people that are looking for a kidney, they're desperate, they don't want to be waiting around for the kidney. So what they do is they contact the uh, inner circle, say, let's call it the deep state, the deep state, and the deep state will contact China. China gets the information and China will go out and execute a prisoner to get the item that they need, so they need a kidney. So they get the kidney from the executed prisoner, send it back to the United States, and the deep state gets the kidney and they, they bring it to the person that's in desperate need of the kidney. So this is an example of uh, the deep state. Now, uh, China's not going to admit this, that they do this kind of stuff, and the United States isn't going to admit this. But uh, this is actually stuff that uh, goes on. So you need to contact, like, the, quote, deep state, the inner circle, the secret society. So there's a bunch of these uh, uh, inner circles around. So I'm going to focus on the alternative society here on this program. So uh, the Chinese thing was kind of like an alternative thing because you're not really part of the establishment. Uh, the establishment wants you to go on the, on the list to get your kidney. They don't go for the idea of executing a prisoner to get the kidney. They say, oh, we don't believe in this, you know. Of course, China does stuff that uh, that uh, uh, people don't really know about. China has a reputation for doing stuff like this. Now, I know for a fact that in China, you don't actually even need a credit card or anything to go to a store. You'll actually pay with your face. They call it facial recognition. And you just look in the camera and you just pay with your face. Now, that shows the advancement of China. And they were complaining about this, the Chinese uh, people uh, that are doing computer stuff. There was a, a kind of a protest. They call it the 996 group, uh, people working in China on computers. And now that means 996 means you're working from 9 to 9, six days a week. That's what that means. And the Chinese are noted for making their uh, workers do this type of stuff because they're in desperate need to uh, get information from the West. So they do hijacking computers, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm not really a computer person. Uh, I'm from the counterculture from the 1970s. So I did go through four years of college but I actually refused to join the establishment. I considered the establishment a little bit uh, too uh, overbearing. Uh, I, I got a, a degree in education, and the reason why I didn't really like that is that uh, when you work as a school teacher, you punch in at the beginning of the school year and you don't punch out until the end of the school year. It's like seven days a week that you're constantly working. It's like constant work. It's really a, a, a very difficult profession. That's one of the problems with the teaching profession. I'm sure that people are dedicated and they, they want to go into teaching and uh, that is a, a, a good profession. Unfortunately, the teachers are complaining that they're not earning enough money uh, and uh, they're spending all this uh, time and effort doing their teaching, but that's the way it is. Teaching isn't really considered uh, something that uh, some people consider worthwhile. Uh, uh, depends on your perspective. Now, when I was at uh, UMass, I went to UMass, and uh, I was influenced by a philosophy at the School of Education. It was Sid Simon, and he had values clarification. So uh, values clarification is something that I think that uh, people need to uh, think more about. You list your 
top values in life, say uh, your, your top 20 values, and you decide of those top 20, which one's your top five, and then you focus on your top five values. So I wasn't really interested in money. Uh, I, I didn't classify myself as a capitalist. Uh, even though we live in the United States, uh, in the United States as a capitalist society, I kind of considered myself more of an existentialist in the sense that I, uh, I wanted uh, um, a more value of my time and space. So I was more concerned about time and space than money. Uh, saying that everybody in, in, in the United States is a capitalist, in my opinion, is like saying that everybody in Nazi Germany was a Nazi between like 40, 1940 and 1945. Not everybody in Germany was a Nazi. The Nazis basically took over and uh, uh, people were afraid of the Nazis. So this is uh, the reason why that was that was a problem there at that time period. So in, in the United States, if you're not a capitalist, uh, you're going to be having problems. Uh, and I wasn't a capitalist. Uh, I actually worked part-time jobs since 1975. I haven't had a full-time job since 1975 because I wanted my time. I didn't want to be tied down on a job. The teaching thing, like I mentioned, you're doing that like seven days a week. You're kind of preoccupied with the job. I wanted time to do other things. Uh, and I did do other things. I did a number of uh, activities over that uh, time period. So anyway, so I'm uh, talking about an alternative society. And uh, one of the things that I want to point out is that uh, the Ouroboros Inner Circle being a, a Viking type of thing, and they were inter interested in the spirit world. And uh, I do have an interest in the spirit world. I have a crystal here, and I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll say, show me a yes, and the crystal goes what way? It goes clockwise. And I'll say, show me a no, and the crystal goes counterclockwise. Now, I don't have any explanation for that. I'm not moving it around just to, you know, so uh, this is what's happening and I'm moving it. It moves by itself. Uh, but I've been doing this like for uh, over 30 years. So I kind of have uh, more uh, ability to do this. If somebody goes to a store and buys a crystal, they may and they may not be able to do the same thing. I think that uh, I, I do have a connection with the spirit world. And I wanted to mention that because uh, we have surveillance cameras at our house. Uh, my wife spent about $3,000 on surveillance cameras uh, that goes around the house. And we have a lot of unusual, unexplained things on camera. Uh, for example, we have orbs flying inside the house, outside the house. Sometimes, and this is after midnight, we'll look at the uh, surveillance camera uh, stuff on the uh, monitors and we'll see a snowstorm of orbs, say like three o'clock in the morning. But instead of orbs coming down like it was raining, the orbs are coming up from the ground. They're coming up. So I said, oh, what is this? We have uh, a snowstorm of orbs and not, they're not even coming down from the sky, they're coming up. So we have thousands of orbs coming up from the ground. There's orbs flying inside the house. There's unexplained things happen to me on a weekly basis. I mean, I could give you all kinds of examples. I really don't, don't want to get you too scared about this, but uh, I experience the paranormal stuff on a weekly basis. It really doesn't bother me. It's not like uh, like you'll see a movie and uh, uh, some creature will come and attack you. Uh, this is not what's happening. It's usually just some kind of unexplained activity or some kind of unexplained event. My favorite event 
and I was going to bring it with me today, but I didn't bother with it. Uh, we moved from uh, uh, Northampton to Hadley, and my my mother was wrapping up the dishes with the newspapers, uh, wrapped up dishes, put them in a box. So she wrapped up uh, a coffee uh, cooker. It was a glass thing. So we had this around for a number of years, the box full of uh, wrapped up uh, dishes. Uh, they were all wrapped up in newspaper. And my wife decided to look at these uh, dishes if they were worthwhile to, to save. And that what what did she tell me? She said, well, I unwrapped the uh, coffee thing and there was a dead bird in there. I said, what are you talking about? And I went over to the rubbish to look at it. Sure enough, there was a dead bird inside the coffee thing. I, I couldn't believe it because I said my mother didn't wrap up a dead bird in the uh, in the coffee thing. This is kind of an unexplained type of thing. So uh, I couldn't really understand what that was, but I'm guessing it's a paranormal type of thing. So uh, uh, we're kind of partial to the paranormal here. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, I can uh, get some paranormalists to uh, investigate uh, some of the things at my house because I mentioned that I have paranormal activity at my house. Uh, the paranormal stuff happens on a regular basis. My wife has an iPad. She made uh, uh, some uh, copies of the paranormal stuff onto the iPad, so we do have some unusual things on the iPad. I really don't want to be showing the iPad to the general public uh, because some of the stuff is kind of unusual. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there might be some kind of explanation for it. Uh, I can point out one of the things that uh, that we have on the iPad that I thought was kind of unusual because I said we have surveillance cameras at the house. So uh, the surveillance cameras uh, uh, pick up stuff mainly at night time because it uses night vision. And so we have uh, unusual types of things, like I said, orbs and stuff that I see. Uh, the thing that I thought was kind of unusual uh, the camera that's pointing to our garage. We have uh, we have the uh, unusual thing of some kind of thing like uh, like a box or something that you see coming out of the garage and it comes flying up into the air. There's no explanation for that. It's uh, a very unusual some kind of. Uh, some kind of entity or something. I don't know what it is, but we have that on the iPad. Uh, the entity emerging from the garage. And so I'm kind of curious to know what that might be. Uh, so I do have evidence of uh, paranormal stuff. Somebody might say this is uh, fake stuff. Uh, the surveillance cameras doesn't create fake stuff there. So we'll see stuff on there and it's not fake stuff, it's paranormal stuff. So I do have a belief in the uh, paranormal. I think the paranormal exists. There are uh, spirits that exist amongst us and uh, they, they're they out and about. I, I've been writing some, some ideas down. Uh, there's a spirit world amongst us that leaves signs to guide us. This is one of the thoughts that I had. So we do have various signs that we uh, get, but most people are so preoccupied with their phones, the smartphones now, they don't really have uh, uh, much to do with uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, nature and stuff. They, they can't they can't deal with uh, life without their phone. And I, I personally don't have a phone. Uh, I don't carry a phone around with me. I, I did buy a phone, but my wife uses the phone, so I don't carry a phone around with me. So I'm not really big on the uh, 
phone thing. People can't get a hold of me. Uh, I, I rarely check email. I don't even check my regular mail sometimes. So there's stuff that uh, people are trying to contact me. I just don't really want to be dealing with it. So uh, I'm kind of into my own uh, kind of a life that I really don't want to be dealing with all this other stuff that you uh, get. Uh, the smartphone, my wife gave it to me uh, a couple of nights. And so I checked it like in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning. So what do I see on the smartphone? It says the five scariest videos on YouTube. Uh, I didn't bring that up. I said, I'm, I'm not looking at the five scariest videos on YouTube. Uh, I thought that was kind of unusual. Another unusual thing about the smartphone, or I, I don't know if it's a smartphone or my wife's phone, but she plugs it in to charge it up. But instead of charging up, it decreases. So it's not charging up. That's one of the uh, unusual things that I've experienced. So I don't have any explanation for that. I'm calling this a conundrum. So we got the unexplained happening and there's a number of unexplained things that have happened to me. Uh, I know that uh, with people that have lived in the house, uh, some people have had uh, uh, unusual experiences. Maybe that's why they moved out. Uh, uh, I did have a person that lived in my house back in 1975 and he ended up at Northampton State Hospital and committed suicide. So I should have known back in 1975, you know, I have to be careful about people in the house because some of these people might have some kind of problems. So I, I did have somebody even asking me about that. And I said, yeah, that was back in 1975. I guess it was in the newspaper. So uh, I've had a people that have lived in the house and I know of at least eight people that have lived in my house that have died. Of course, that's a, a couple of them were my parents. Uh, I happen to be living in the room where my father died. My father was brought over to the house and died uh, the next day. And I'm in that room that uh, uh, he died in. Uh, I'm not really concerned about it, but uh, I don't know if that's something that uh, is part of this paranormal thing. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of uh, unusual things that happen at my house. So uh, I'm kind of uh, concerned about uh, uh, paranormal activities. They do influence us. I'm saying that uh, there's no such thing as a coincidence that people have uh, things and they say, oh, that was just a coincidence. I don't think that there is such a thing as a coincidence. I don't think that there's uh, the spirits are, are bothering you at night, but I do have unusual dreams and perhaps the dreams uh, are a form of uh, contacting uh, uh, ghosts or whatever. I don't really have any explanation. I have some kind of odd dreams sometimes. Uh, uh, for example, uh, <laughs> a dream, I, I remember somebody's leaving food in my mailbox and I have to go out there and throw it away because the food's been sitting in the mailbox there. I said, oh, food in the mailbox here. I guess I got to throw it away. But that was a dream that I had. So uh, <laughs> I thought that was kind of unusual because I guess I was probably thinking about food. <laughs> but... Uh, 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 I have unusual dreams sometimes, but uh, that's not really, I think, anything unusual. People have unusual dreams all the time. I'm experiencing apparent normal stuff that actually you can see with the surveillance cameras. So the surveillance cameras do pick up unusual things, like I said, orbs, uh, I've seen some other things look like a ghost was in the living room. Uh, I'm really kind of concerned about it. A dead bird that uh, was there amongst the stuff that my mother wrapped up in 1970. 
and just unwrapping it now there's a dead bird in the uh thing there and uh, it was wrapped up in newspaper i know it was 1970 because it was a 1970 newspaper was wrapped around the item there so i didn't have any explanation for that i have a theory about that uh and this is my theory when my mother died I was in the room there where I'm staying now and a bird kept tapping on the glass, tap, 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 tap. And I was kind of uh, upset because I thought that might be a sign that my mother died, uh, tapping bird. Uh, and when my wife was in that room, she said one of her relatives died and the bird was tapping on the window again when her relative died. So I don't know if the birds are sending us messages. I, I think this is kind of an unusual thing. And then we got the dead bird. So I, I don't know. I don't have any explanation for it. I think it's kind of a, really kind of an unusual thing. Birds tapping on the window. Uh, I don't think they were woodpeckers. I know woodpeckers tap like we have a wood siding and the wood, woodpeckers are... Uh, 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 tapping on the siding once in a while, but the bird was actually tapping on the glass. So that's not a woodpecker tapping on the glass. It was some kind of bird sending me a message. So uh, that's an example of uh, unexplained thing that uh, I just wanted to point out. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. I don't want to get people uh, kind of wondering about uh, if things are happening they might experience things they don't have any explanation for. Uh, they'll say, well, you know, wh what's the story here? I'm plugging in my smartphone instead of charging up. It's decreasing and things just keep happening, happening over and over and over and over again. Some unusual things that happen. Uh, I'm attributing some of these things to, uh, to the paranormal. So I'm a believer in the paranormal only because I've experienced the paranormal. It's not like in my imagination. We have the surveillance cameras. We have birds tapping. Another unusual thing, uh, I have cats. Uh, this is kind of an unusual thing. Uh, I had a black cat that I got from the Dakin uh, shelter, and the cat died maybe uh, a two or three years ago. And uh, then all of a sudden, outside in the yard, there's one black cat hanging around. And uh, then there was another one. And uh, I managed to get these two cats inside the house. Uh, I have like uh, one of those have a hot traps and caught the cats, uh, bring them inside. Then there's a third black cat out there. Uh, and I think I've seen another a black cat that had some white on it. So we got a bunch of black cats hanging around the, the house there. Uh, and I had a black cat that day, I died. I said, well, why am I getting all these black cats here? What, uh, like a buy one, get two free? <laughs> like one one dead cat, then you get a two, three more, like uh, like this is the uh, paranormal sign that, oh, I'm sorry about your cat, here's two more black cats for you. Uh, I don't know, I think it's kind of strange. I'm going to say, if you need to contact me, the Ouroboros Inner Circle at protonmail.com. Protonmail is an encrypted email service. So this is protonmail made by some MIT people based in Switzerland. So you don't have to worry about the government uh, snooping on your uh, emails there. That's why I got it, it's encrypted email. But I'm, I, if you have any kind of uh, a thing you wanna send me a message, I'm not gonna guarantee that you're gonna get a response. Some people might uh, send me some goofy messages uh, and I'm probably not going to respond, but uh, I'll see, you know, I'll check out the emails uh, probably at the library. I don't have a computer. Uh, my wife uses a smartphone. I don't carry a phone around with me. I don't really keep up with the outside world because I'm in the uh, inner world here, the... Uh, the Ouroboros inner circle here. I kind of grew up in the 60s. I don't really 
need to be dealing with smartphones. I grew up at a time that they didn't have video games and smartphones. You know, the kids nowadays, they said, what, no phones, no smartphones? What's our society was like back 30 years ago? Well, <laughs> I'm in my 60s. I don't really need to be dealing with uh, modern stuff there. It's really uh, something that might be uh, good to uh, deal with once in a while, but I'm not really going to do it. We'll catch you later here.